Thanks for uh, sticking around for uh, the next topic here, which is related to uh, the great presentation that we just saw. Um, in this case, we're going to take a bit of a higher level approach looking at the, the mobile game market, actually what I'm calling smart and social, and uh, what we believe ultimately is becoming the industry's crown jewel. So who am I and why am I qualified to talk? Is that better? OK. Hello. Um, I'm a senior research analyst following internet and video games at investment bank Robert Baird and Company in San Francisco. Uh, followed the industries for about the last 10 years. And before that was a software developer and also CFO of an internet startup in the uh, career services space. It, by the way, if you would like to receive our research, email me at the, um, after the session and we'd be happy to add you to our distribution list. So in terms of the presentation here, um, this probably won't take the full 30 minutes, but uh, um, I'm going to step back, look at the broader video game industry, quantify the size of the industry, some of the trends. We will also introduce uh, some new forecasts for, for both the broader industry as well as mobile and social gaming. Talk a little bit about some of the, the key areas of research that we focused on, such as the power of exponential, the influence of Facebook, and what we see is a rapid shift away from some of the legacy platforms to, to mobile and smart platforms. Um, I will have a lot of data here in the presentation. If, if you are trying to write it down and you don't get all of it, I'm happy to email the presentation out uh, later. So the video game market overall, just you know, so we we're all on the same page, it's it's a it's a very very big business. It's close to sixty billion dollars in terms of dedicated hardware and software, and that's per year. And employs over a hundred thousand people worldwide. So you know, it's a legitimate, large, and growing industry, part of the media and entertainment world. In fact, if you compare video games to every other form of media and entertainment, it's also the fastest growing. And you know, a lot of the traditional media companies that I work with, public companies on a, on a weekly, daily basis, uh, they still don't have as high regard for gaming as they should. And, and that leaves a lot of room for a small, global, startup, and more forward-thinking companies uh, to really gain a foothold in this market when the internet and games are really the, the crown jewels of, of the entertainment business. And that leads me to our first takeaway, which is that games are the most important form of digital media. And I often believe that we in the industry don't give ourselves, don't give our industry as much respect as it deserves. And I, th I think that's changing. In terms of the, the platforms, the distribution of games, um, certainly in Western markets, there's, there's still a bit of uh, dominance by the physical product. We're seeing that shift very quickly. And in fact, video games um, are, are making that transition on multiple platforms, as we know. Uh, what I'd like to point out here is that unlike other forms of media, such as video, music, newsprint, audio, consumers are very happy to pay for games. They're not so happy paying for songs or, or for video clips. And so the video game space is in a very good position as this transition to, to uh, the digital format progresses. And clearly the biggest innovation really obviously originating out of Asia is the shift to virtual goods and what, what I like to call the e-commerce model for digital media. So unlike a, a lot of forms of, of internet content, Introducing commerce as a way of transacting, as a way of paying for games, is very compelling for consumers. In fact, if you look at, um, from a point of view of valuations, e-commerce versus advertising models versus paying for content on a, on a per-unit basis, e-commerce is more highly valued. In fact, consumers are more willing to buy content this way. So, you know, from that point of view, as more and more games shift to free to play in virtual goods, I think the industry is going to hit another inflection point. I think everybody here knows the beauty of this model. You're not restricting the amount that people play, pay for games, and you're also uh, introducing a broader net to bring more people into the, into the gaming landscape. 
So this is a, a revised forecast that we, we are just putting out here at the conference for mobile and social games. Um, this is a little bit more narrowly defined than some of the other forecasts you see out there, but in terms of uh, just the pure amount uh, paid for virtual goods on mobile platforms, this is quickly becoming a, a ten, going to be a $10 billion business, and this is going to be the fastest growing, it is the fastest growing part of the market. And, and certainly from an investor's point of view, this is the part of, mar of the market that will be more highly valued and, and rewarded. And not forgetting the fact that advertising is also a very legitimate business model in, in games and on mobile platforms. In fact, what this slide here shows is that there's a still a significant or a disproportionate amount of advertising dollars spent on television and newspapers and, and a radio. And if you look at the time spent on mobile platforms or on games, there's a huge opportunity to increase the monetization of, of particularly gamers who aren't buying virtual goods through advertisements. So second takeaway, the global video game industry growth will be driven by smart devices. Um, this is something that shouldn't be um, a surprise again to, to those people here in the audience, but think about it, of course, not just with phones, but with tablets and connected TVs as well. A year from now at this conference, you will see a significant increase in the number of people, consumers who have access to app stores and app markets on their televisions as well as their tablets and their, and their phones. Which brings me to uh, a discussion of, of the exponential nature of smart and social. Um, you know, really great platform dynamics here um, for, for both mobile and for social games and leveraging the microtransaction model in particular. And my favorite example of this, and, and you all may have seen this before, but Imagine yourself in a stadium the size of one of the largest football fields in either Korea or the U.S. And imagine you're sitting at the top of the stadium and a drop of water falls in the middle of the field. And if every minute the number of drops doubles, so minute two, two drops, minute three, four drops, etc., how long would it take to fill the stadium with water? So I'm turning it back to you guys. 45 minutes, three hours, 12 hours, or two days? Who thinks 45 minutes? How about three hours? 12 hours? Or two days? Okay, distribution. 45 minutes. So that's the power of exponentials. So just like the last presentation showed that the, the one user generates 15,000 registrations, the mix of social plus mobile mix of social plus smart on any mobile, on any smart device, that's an incredibly powerful combination. And we're already seeing the results of that, you know, with certain games, with certain companies. And, and this is something that, as a developer, you should think about filling the stadium. And not surprisingly, we're seeing exponential growth in just the number of devices that are being sold into the market here. Um, the same force we've seen in phones is, is, is uh, being seen both on iOS as well as Android platforms, potentially on Windows devices, potentially with Samsung, Samsung's own platform. And, and this will likely exponentially increase to the point where each person has multiple devices. And, and that by itself is a very interesting proposition. Another example of the exponential nature of this business is, is usage of games on smartphones. Just the rapid increase, the engagement of users on these devices is remarkable just in the past two years. And, and that's, that's a significant benefit to developers leveraging their existing user base. So not only do you have to, not only can you increase your number of customers, but the opportunity to drive engagement within your existing customer base is significant. An example we saw DNA just a minute ago, Gree has a similar increase in the number of, of uh, mobile users. This is one of my favorite slides, though. Uh, looking at the blue line is, is, the, uh, is actually iPhones, the install base over time. And the iPad is the red line. And what we see with iPads, with tablets in general, is that not surprisingly, they're better gaming devices. The form factor is much more conducive to, to gaming. 
And what's very exciting about this, this uh, slide is that the rate of adoption of tablets is even greater than, than smartphones. So that bodes very well for our business you know, over, the, over the next decade. And then I mentioned before the connected TVs, but this multi-device lifestyle where each individual consumer of games will have the phone, will have the tablet, will have the TV. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's the same game ported across each platform, although that's also an opportunity, but simply the fact that consumers will be accessing these app markets on all these different connected devices. Another interesting way to look at this is the percent of internet traffic coming from smart devices. And, and what I would point out here is that the larger percentage, even though this is the minority of internet traffic coming from smart devices, the majority of people's free time, though, is spent on these devices. So what you're seeing here is a rapid shift from desktop PCs in the home over to these devices for entertainment, for other utility outside of the workplace. And of course, I don't need to tell you that it's a global market. And by plugging into the, the app stores, the various operating systems, there's relatively easy access to, to a, a market that includes all major geographies, continents, and countries. That's different than the prior game cycles on the, the Xbox and PlayStation, or the, the MMO games in China, et cetera. So we truly have a global, a global market now. And just another piece of evidence of this, on smartphones and tablets, uh, very quickly China has surpassed the US in terms of the traffic generated online from, from smart devices. So I mentioned at the outset, uh, I was gonna contrast this a bit with social networking platforms, and in particular Facebook. And I think um, the interesting thing we're seeing right now, this year, is that Facebook is seeing a slowdown in terms of its payments or game-related revenues. And the, the growth rate um, for Zynga as well has started to slow. And we think that this is, this is due in part to a, a sh for, from Facebook's perspective, a shift of developers focusing on smart devices and away from Facebook. And that's having an effect on, on Zynga as well, despite their special relationship with Facebook. Users are moving beyond the, uh, the desktop social network, looking for those compelling casual game experiences. And for the most part, they're finding that on, on smart devices. Sure. Well, I don't think they're inconsistent. You can see there's a sequential decline for Facebook from Q4 to Q1, which is the right bar. On a year-over-year -year basis, it's still growing significantly. That's probably the difference. So, you know, Google, as an example of an internet platform, grew sequentially every quarter for eight years. And in Facebook, you know, on a relatively fast, quick basis, has has shown a little bit of a slowdown sequentially. So I think part of this is due to the fact that Facebook has removed some of the virality from the platform. Likely over time they will reintroduce some of those viral marketing uh, channels and, and that will likely accelerate the business. So a couple of examples of companies that have shifted their relative portion of development away from Facebook to smart devices. Uh, this is, you know, Kabam, Vuga, and Zynga, Funzio. Uh, there are other examples. I, I, this is not a, a statement that Facebook is not a compelling game platform. It's a statement that the diversification to smart devices is a maturing of the social game market and, and very positive for the industry as a whole. So we view this to mean that smart devices are a disruptive force. We talked about the desktop, the browser dislocation to some extent, the social network dislocation. We see, we see that this disruptive force is similar to what happened with web browsers. It's, it's that significant in our view. Um, platforms certainly are key here, uh, and there are plenty of platforms and tool sets that developers can use to leverage 
their games and their intellectual properties across multiple platforms. And, and certainly that's something that, that most of you will, will need to do. Um, of these, I will point out one wild card guess that out of all these platforms, I think Amazon may emerge as one of the most interesting over the next three to four years. They are investing a significant amount of money, not only in their own internal game development, but also to, uh, to allow third parties to publish games on Amazon. You'll see new devices from Amazon, different form factors, and as well as um, a way of, of taking the Android marketplace to, to a higher level, I, obviously to compete more directly with Apple. So I think that would be very interesting for you to, uh, to pay attention to. So um, just here in conclusion, you know, we're seeing a huge wave of smart devices, exponential growth dynamics. There aren't too many opportunities we have to witness this change. Um, as content developers, as, as, as internet companies. These are obviously global opportunities. Uh, there's, there's growth on Facebook as well as off of social networks. And the distribution in many cases, is, or in most cases, is efficient and uh, certainly opportunities to play the platforms. So that's, those are my prepared remarks. Uh, if you didn't get slides and you would like them, feel free to email me at that address. But um, otherwise, well, thanks, everybody. Thank you very much.